Hello, church family. It's good to be with you again during this week's edition of our Pastor Cast. Let me start by saying thank you. So many of you have sent the office notes and cards expressing your gratitude and your thanks for the work the church office is doing during this season. It's really been a means of grace to us and it's really been encouraging to us. So thank you for sending those notes to us. Proverbs 25, 25 says, like cold water to a weary soul is good news from a far country. Your notes to us have been good news. They have been fresh cups of water and we have been refreshed by them. So thank you so much for sending them to us. Usually on Sunday mornings, we like to share announcements with the church body, but we've been using our pastor cast to do that lately. So let me share with you a few things. First is congratulations to both Noah Terry and Chloe Scafitti on their recent engagement. If you know Noah and you know Chloe, please extend your heartfelt congratulations to them. May the grace of God be with you both during this time in your life. We also wanna share with you that Mike and Liz Jones, who have been a part of our church body for over two decades, and they raised their daughters here, and they all served in ministry here. Uh, last month, they moved to Alaska. So please be praying for them as they start this next chapter in their life. May the grace of God be with them as well. And lastly, we wanna share that Jamie and Tyler Smith will soon be moving next month to Idaho, where Tyler has accepted a position to work at a Christian school. And speaking with Tyler, he's acknowledged that this is really a bittersweet time for them. This is not a wonderful time to be leaving a church that they love, given that we're all sheltered in place, but they do love us. He said as much, and they will be missing us. And so if you know Jamie and Tyler, please reach out to them and, and express your love to them and share with them just your own, your own thoughts and feelings as they head off to Idaho here shortly. This past Sunday, many of us shared the Lord's table together during the 9 a.m. service, during our live streaming service. And it truly was a means of grace to me and my family. And as pastors, we hope that it was a really a sweet time for you and your families as well. Um, it, was, it serves for us, you recall, as a reminder, a visible reminder of the gospel and the assurance that God is for us and is not against us and that our sins are forgiven and that we have peace with a holy God. The Lord's table is one of the means of grace that God has given his people. It's one of the means that provides, provides to us a, a strength and a certainty uh, to our faith, that God's promises are real, that they are true, and that we can depend upon them, and that nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Uh, but I also want to remind you to make use of all that God has given to us in Christ Jesus. There are so many means of grace that God has given to us. And times like ours, it's easy to lay aside uh, our, our pursuit of walking with Christ as we, seek to, uh, as we seek to muscle up under our own strength and soldier on uh, as we seek to persevere during what's hard for so many of us. Um, and I shared with you last week my own struggles with that and what the Lord had taught me during this season. Um, I do want to encourage you during this week to make use of all that God has given to us in Christ. He's given to us so, many, so much in Jesus. And I wanna share with you three things that I, I hope you are encouraged in and that I hope you continue to persevere in. And the one is God has given us his word as a means of grace. He's given us prayer as a means of grace. And he's given us worship as a means of God's grace. First with the word, I mentioned last week that Deuteronomy 32, 47, God says your word is life. And I encouraged you to fill your hearts with what's true. Uh, Colossians 3.16 says we are to have the, the word of Christ dwell richly in us. And as God's word fills our hearts, we think, God, we think God's thoughts after him and his truths transform us and they change us. Acts 20.32 refers to scripture as the word of his grace. Meditate, dwell upon God's truth. Even use this time to memorize scripture, uh, that the grace of God might fill your hearts. And as David said, he would hide God's word in his heart, that he might not sin against God, that he might live according to God's word. Because we have peace with God, and Christ is our brother and our great high priest, we have also the freedom to boldly come into the presence of God during our time of need. Uh, Hebrews 4 14 through 16 says these words, 
Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The scriptures assure us that because of Christ, we are, we are free through prayer to boldly approach the throne room of grace in time of our need for mercy and grace. Now is the time, brothers and sisters. Seize the day, seize the moment to boldly come into God's presence and lay your requests at his feet. Use this time to discipline yourself, to pray. There's so much to be praying for during this time. And I know many of you are struggling. Are you hurting right now? Do you find yourself grumbling? Do you find yourself complaining? Do you find yourself discontent? Do you, do you seek wisdom to understand all that's going on around you right now? Well, the scriptures say, pray, beloved. James 4 says, you do not have because you do not ask. Prayer is where the grace of God meets you. It's where the grace of God meets me. And he freely gives it. Prayer puts us in this wonderful position of humility. James 4 says that he pours out his grace upon us. Grace upon grace is poured out upon those who are humble. And truly, in prayer, we are dependent people, humble people. And that's where grace meets us in our, in our hour of need. Christ bids you to come in your weakness. He bids you to come. So brothers and sisters, come. Come to the Lord. Practice the season to have a time of prayer regularly with the Lord. Perhaps moms and dads, you can use this time at home to help your children understand why creating this habit of prayer is so important and help them learn to create this new discipline of prayer in their own lives. Lastly, our time in worship on Sunday mornings really brings these elements together. The word of God is preached as a means of grace to us. When we, when we pray, the grace of God ministers to us. And when we sing songs, that really the grace of God is poured out in our hearts as we lift up our voices, as we seek to exalt the Lord Jesus, as we seek to praise his name. Our praise, our singing, our listening to the word of God, preached as a means of God's grace and goodness to us. Are you approaching worship on Sundays in your homes the way you would do if you came to church on Sunday morning? Are you coming into, the, are you coming into your living rooms the same way you would come into the worship center on Sunday mornings with your hearts and your minds prepared. I know sometimes on Sunday mornings at, at, when you go to the campus at church, you may come rushed, but you do enter the worship center and you sit and it's a time for you to pay attention, a time for you to pray and a time for you to have the word of God minister to you. But when you come into your living rooms, do you come prepared? Come prepared to worship or do you find yourselves stumbling out of your beds and Flick, clicking on YouTube just in time to listen to the message as you're making your coffee? Are you treating Sunday mornings more as a podcast? Or are you treating it as a time to worship the living God? Don't treat Sundays that way. Come to worship. This is where the grace of God meets you. Come into your living room. Come wherever you're going to be. Come and prepare your hearts to be still under the word. Sing with joyful hearts. Pray when we're praying during the service and have the grace of God meet you there. Listen, we don't, we don't have the privilege uh, to suffer, if you will, like our brothers and sisters do in the Middle East and parts of Asia and Africa. Nevertheless, as Tony alluded to on Sunday, what if this time is preparing for us for a greater time of suffering? Are you ready? How will you respond? Make time now during this strange season that we have together. And let us together discipline ourselves for godliness, that the grace of God might meet us during this time and that we might shine as bright lights for the gospel to a world that is wondering how we might respond as a people of God. One last thought to leave you with. Those notes you send to the office, I'd say those are a means of grace to us and they encourage us and they, they keep us keeping on. Just as those notes encourage us, reach out to one another. We need one another. We are God's means of grace to one another. We are called to encourage one another and build one another up. 
Are you doing that with one another? Are you calling your friends? Are you reaching out to the shut-ins? Are you reaching out to the elderly? Are you, are you reaching out to those who are lonely? We need, this, we need the word of God spoken to us. We need fellowship. We need friendship. That's another means of God's grace to us. And don't forget one another. Continue to speak into one another's lives. Continue to share the grace of God with one another as you reach out to one another. Thank you for your prayers. Keep praying for your pastors. We greatly need the, the wisdom of God, the grace of God. We need the clarity from God that, and that we might have unity as pastors as we seek to shepherd the flock of God in the days and weeks ahead. I do look forward to the day when we're together again, but until then, may the grace of God be with you all.